guys and welcome to Planet Mercury. Today I am actually going to do a story time because I had always been drawn to story times. Um, a lot of people have really good stories. Tana Majo, um, Shannon Rose who is my like love and I thought I was like I have a lot of fucked up stories and I thought I would try one. One <sighs> by the title you can tell this was when I was fucked over by a musician now I am NOT the best storyteller but since it's my first one but I am doing this off the cuff and I'm gonna try to remember everything like step by step so just bear with me hang on and we will go for this ride together um, so this all started out I am on Instagram as most of you know all of my um, information is on the down bar. I was on Instagram and I would get a lot of um, like direct messages and stuff and I would be approached by multiple people about like modeling or whatever what have you and most of the time it was just some person with a camera that was like oh yeah I t totally model for me and nude and stuff and I was just like uh, no. So <sighs> this guy who I'm not going to credit in this, um, in the description box, but I will say his band name and his first name. So if you want to look for him, be my guest. But I'm honestly, I'm not going to go near his page. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to give him any more views. I am so over this dude. Like, okay. Johnny Lovacane. His band name is Lovacane. So he ended up messaging me and he was saying that he wanted me to be in his music video. And I was like, oh, that sounds cool. And ended up being, um, I forgot what the name of the song was. But anyway, like, I was like, mm, like, it sounds cool, but I don't want to just start just being in a music video I don't even like, you know, like, I don't want my first music video to be like some shitty song or whatever. So I ended up asking him what it was and he had an iTunes EP. So I was like, okay, I'll check it out. It was awful. Like the rest of his songs were actually really good, but this particular song, he sounded like a goat. Like he, it sounded like this and like, like, as he was going, like, that was the chorus and stuff, like, it was not good. There was a bunch of other ones that were honestly pretty damn good. I will give him credit there. But, and he wrote all of his songs and everything, as far as I know. Um, he was kind of like a one-man band. So, I ended up um, going, okay, well, I kind of like it, so I guess it's a maybe. I was nice. I'm not going to go, that was bullshit. That was just crappy. So um, he ended up messaging me back saying it would be shot at Bam's mansion, Bam Margera. He, um, he knew him, and we were going to go and hang out with him together. Now, the music video was supposed to be shot at Bam Margera's um, mansion, which uh, didn't happen because apparently um, Johnny was friends with Novak and Novak had taken Bam, one of Bam's Lambos and drove it into a tree or something like that and he like fucking totaled it. Like it was insane. So he was banned from um, Bam's house like for a long time and with him he was like you know just fuck it I don't want anybody here. I'm so pissed off right now. So that never happened and I was like okay well that kind of sucks because um, Bam Margera, honestly, I'm one of his biggest fans, so when I heard that I could be meeting him, my mind was, like, insane. I was like, I need to fucking meet him, that'd be so fucking cool. So, automatically, I was like, yeah, I want to do the music video. <laughs> I was like, fuck my morals, <laughs> I don't care. Um, but, anyway, uh... It ended up not being at the mansion, so he was kind of on his own from there. And he, this guy, let me give you an example of him. He's 33 years old, still living in a shack, whatever. Like, 
you know, in and out of his parents' house, on his friend's couch. Like, he was just using people constantly. I don't know if you can hear that. It just started, like, thundering and raining outside. Anyway, um, crashing in um, on his friend's couches and stuff. So he was, like, you know, he didn't have it well off. He had a job for a second, and I can't remember what it was, but he ended up getting fired. Um, it was over something ridiculous or whatever, and he ended up getting another job, and it was one of those nine-to-five jobs, and he was, like, a practicing musician um, after all that, so I was like, okay, I can respect that. So I knew he had a job at that time because we had been talking over a period of months and I was like, okay, well, you know, maybe I'll do this music video or whatever. I was kind of like, Neh. and then he told me the breakdown of, okay, well, um, I can't pay you for this. And I went, okay, so I'm not getting paid to go and be featured in your video. Like, this was a big part. This was, like, his love interest, and he was, you know, like, really into this girl. She was, like, the main focus of this, um, other than him singing. So, I was like, okay, that's, that's fine. And I didn't care. And he, and he was living in Florida at the time. I'm in Texas, and I was still in Texas. This was, like, a few years ago. Um, he was like, yeah, well, you can fly down here and, you know, um, stay in a hotel and this and that. And I was like, well, okay. Um, and he kind of was like, well, yeah, you have to pay for it. And I was like, wait, you want me to spend my money on a plane ticket to come to you, stay in a hotel that I'm paying for, to do a favor for you? And I'm not even getting paid five dollars to do this and I was like you know I'm gonna have to say no because there's no way like I I didn't like the song to begin with nothing was going like he told me it was supposed to go and then I also had to pay for everything so I was just like nope I'm out bye like gone we still talked um, through uh, Instagram and we ended up texting each other anyway like um, gave each other our phone numbers and everything so we would talk and he approached me again um, it was after his music video and everything it was let out and I had to listen to it um, pretend I liked it <laughs> like I I bought this guy's whole iTunes EP like, which is six songs, I think, like, it was a list of songs. I bought it because he was my friend, and I was like, yeah, I'm nice like that. Like, I was just like, yeah, I'll totally get it. I love it. You know, I didn't really like it at all. I hate it, and I wish I could get my money back. Um, I wish I could get anything back he took from me. Anyway, he approached me again and was like, hey, I'm going to be in Texas because Fuckface Unstoppable is going to be there. And if you guys don't know, Fuckface Unstoppable is Bam Margera's band. He goes around and he tours. He does covers and his own songs. Like, um, I wish I could bend my dick and so I could fuck myself in the ass. Like, that's one of his songs. It's really funny. It's really awesome. Bam Margera is just an awesome guy. So I was like, totally, yeah. Like, that'd be awesome to go see him. And he was like, um, well, do you mind if I stay at your place? And I was like, um... I, yeah, I guess. And I was living with my parents. So, like, I had to talk them into this because I had never met him physically. I was like, all of a sudden he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go stay at your house or whatever. And I was just like, okay. Like, I will, I'll talk them into it somehow. And I did. Um, I vouched for him. This guy that I thought I knew. So moving forward, he ends up going to get a plane ticket. I get a call from him. He goes, hey, do you live, you live in San Antonio, right? And I was like, yeah. 
and he goes, you know, um, are you anywhere near Houston? And Houston is like four, four and a half hours away from where I live. And I was like, well, no, why? And he goes, well, if I take a flight out from Florida to Houston, um, I get to save $20 or something like that. Like it was not a big amount or anything. And he was like, would you be able to come pick me up? And I was kind of pushed back and I was like, yeah, okay. Because I was like, it would save him money. And once again, I'm that type of person. I want to, you know, help somebody if they need help or whatever. And I talked everybody into you driving out four and a half hours and then four and a half hours back. So we go out there, we pick him up. He comes over there. I paid for the gas there and back, but I mind you like both times it was a lot of gas money because a few years ago, the gas prices were a hell of a lot more than they are right now. But we ended up going back and I bought him dinner at a restaurant. I bought him a beer or two and like we were sitting and just talking or whatever and it was like it was honestly really fun and he didn't chip in a dime for anything and I found that kind of odd because I was like you know I I don't expect people to just give money out but I just you know, drove out several miles out of my way, several hours out of my way to get you, to, for you to save $20. And meanwhile, I'm spending like literally a hundred and some dollars on just gas alone and you can't at least give it, you know, just a tip for the waitress or something. Like you can't do any of that. So I found that kind of odd and I kind of just like kind of shrugged it off and I was like, okay, whatever. And um, we went to my place. He stayed at my place. I opened my home to this guy. Like we had a guest bedroom and that's where he stayed. Like, I was like, you're not fucking coming near me. You stay there. And it was right next to my room, but that's where our guest, our little guest room was. So he ended up going over there. I bought him di dinner several times. My parents would cook for him you know, make him things, ask specifically what he would want to eat for that day. And my mom would make it for him. You know, we made him comfortable. And finally, after a few days, it was a day we were supposed to meet up with Bam. And we're going to um, the White Rabbit. And that is a big, um, a big, like, well, it's not big, but it's well known for being a, like, rock joint. Like, um, live rock bands go there all the time. Um, so Fuckface Unstoppable was supposed to be there at the White Rabbit that night. So I was really excited, and I, like, through that time, I, I skipped over a lot, but he was being really weird and being really pushy on me, like, trying to kiss me, you know, trying to get in my room, you know, all that weird stuff. He was, like, telling all his like sap stories and all other bullshit and I was just like lending an ear or whatever but um anyway forward to the day we meet Bam we were supposed to meet him I think it was around like five o'clock I think we were supposed to go there because the show was at seven or no it was at eight thirty or something like that and we were supposed to go really early so we could go and hang out with him on his tour bus um, for a bit, like, before the gig, so we could all, like, talk and hang out and stuff and, like, you know, shoot the shit. So, we were trying to get there, and he was on the phone with, um, Novak, because Bam wouldn't answer his calls. <clears throat> and I was like, it's kind of weird, because you, you were invited by Bam, right? And he was like, yeah, 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 totally. Um, and he was calling Novak because Novak was the only one that would text him back uh, but he wouldn't like answer his calls so it took him like an hour just to get them to be like yeah fine come on like it's like he barely knew them and he made it seem like they were like best friends and I found that that's that was another red flag I was like okay well this is kind of weird like 
you know, through Novak, not BAM. And anyway, we went there. We drove to the White Rabbit. We come up, and it took him like another 30 minutes just to have Novak come off the bus to greet us. And this is a whole different story. If you guys want to hear about my experience meeting BAM, because we actually met and hung out for a really fucking long time and it was really cool except for this guy who actually I saved from being kicked off that bus like he was a jackass the entire time it's a whole different story if you want to hear it leave it in the comments below and I will happily tell it to you but back to the story so we went in there and I met Bam had a fan girl moment um was totally fine we ended up chilling and talking for a bit they went in and they were doing their gig and after their gig um, we were talking in the back on backstage and I remember he was saying um, he was like oh bam let me buy this for you bam let me get this for you like he was buying cases of beer and like cigarettes and everything else like that like volunteering to get him this stuff and I remember going like he didn't give a dime to me for anything not gas money not food not for the house like that I put him in so he didn't have to pay for a fucking hotel like and he's just buying everybody drinks here and there like there's two drummers um, a guitar player a bass player um, him a singer and then Nikki who is now his wife but was his fiance at the time she's also a singer so he was buying drinks for all of them and I was like yeah that's cool that's nice he didn't offer a single thing to me after everything that I had been doing for him and I found that kind of fucking rude like after everything I've been doing for this dude so as the night progresses this guy, Johnny, gets fucking wasted. Like, totally shit-faced. And he was almost getting kicked up. Fana, who is in the band, he's one of the drummers, he ended up, like, trying to kick his ass up because he... I bought food for everybody. I went to Jack in the Box and I got food for, like, everyone there because it was really early in the morning at the time when everybody was hungry. And that was, like, one of the only things that are open in Texas is Jack in the Box and, like, I don't know, um, Taco Cabana or something like that. Um, so I ended up buying that stuff. He took all the food into the bathroom and locked himself in. <laughs> he took everybody's food into the band bathroom. That's how fucking selfish he is. He locked himself in and the tour manager is pounding on the door going, what the fuck, dude? Like, what are you doing? He was so out of his mind drunk. He didn't even notice all of the shit he was doing. And finally, I get him, like, to calm the fuck down, to open the door. I was in shock for, like, the first few minutes. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? But he ended up coming back out. Everybody was fine. I settled everything down. He almost got kicked off the bus again. And once again, I will tell you that story if you want to hear it. Because there's way too much to this story to just cram in this. I'm just talking about how much of a jackass he is. This is this is the part that's going to start to piss me off. Well, it's coming up. We're driving home. You know, I, once again, didn't confront him about anything. He was just swearing, fuck this and fucking assholes, just fuck Bam, and just fucking dicks. Just, like, shit-talking everybody that welcomed him onto that tour bus just because they were going to kick him off for being a total fucking asshole, which they totally should have done. Like, looking back, I shouldn't have stopped them. I was like, bitch, walk back to Florida. <laughs> like, ugh, that's one thing I would have changed. Like, <clears throat> mm -mm. <laughs> So we get back to my place, and my ex calls me, and we're still really good friends. And he was angry with me. I'm not sure why exactly. Um, 
I was probably because I danced on stage with Bam or something and he was being really weird about it and being kind of jealous. I don't know, something like that in that nature. There's more to that story. Um, but anyway, he ended up hanging up on me and I was like, okay, whatever. I'm, I'm not the type of person to call back. Like, if you hang up on me, fuck you. I'm not going to talk to you right now. Like, he ended up coming over and Johnny is still drunk off his ass and he comes over. My ex is six foot four, tall ass Irish guy, like gigantic. And this Johnny guy was like five foot five, little puny piece of shit. He comes out there and is like, you get to fuck off this property and blah, 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 blah. Like I was just, I was telling him, please go the fuck back in the house. I'm going to talk to my ex alone. Like, this is my situation, not yours. And he was just nothing I said, nothing I said, he heard. And he was tempting my ex to hit him. He was going, I dare you freaking hit me. I dare you hit me, man. If you hit me, I'm going to kick your ass. Like, and my ex is a UFC fighter. Like, he was one of the like he was testing to be one like he could beat his ass in a drop and he didn't of course he didn't he knew he was drunk and he was pissed anyway um so that happened on that night and then he kind of like pushed himself like on me a little bit and was like oh, everybody else got to see you like this and blah, blah. and i remember just being kind of like repulsed by him so I went in my room and I just locked my door and I was just like, he was, he was really creeping me out. So flash forward again, it's the day he leaves. So I again drive him to the airport. But before that, I have a Villa Valo book, which I love. It's a hymn book. It's like their only, um, like... Uh, biography and it's like all about the band life and that's one thing we connected on was we both liked him which is my favorite band on the planet and if you say you like him I like you right away and he said he liked that so I was like okay well you know okay that's cool so anyway I had this hymn book that meant a lot to me and I'll tell you why my grandfather he had passed away in I believe 2000 and Eight? No, 2009. Um, nine, ten, somewhere in there. Yeah, I think it was 2010. And, like, the last thing he had ever given me was this book. He knew how much I loved him. I'm not going to cry over this. He knew how much I loved him. And that was the last thing he had given me. And I don't know why I thought it was okay, but I let this guy, after everything he fucking did, I, I let him borrow it. And I was like, can you, you know, will you send this stuff back? Because this means a lot to me. And I trusted him, and I don't know why I trusted him. But he was like, yeah, I'll send it back, totally. And I gave him another bag. I gave him a hem bag with a bunch of, like, heart all over it. It was one of those you could turn inside out, and it still would be a cool bag. Um, so I gave him all that stuff. I gave him, like, money to go back home with so he could buy something to eat at the airport. Like, like I gave everything to this guy. I... I gave him money, I gave him a roof over his head, I made sure he didn't have to pay fucking 20 extra dollars so I could drive him like four and a half hours there and back to my place and then again there and back dropping him off and then coming back to my place. And I remember I asked for gas money and he goes, well I don't have any. And I was like, okay, you don't have anything. He goes, nope. So that's when I gave him money. So I paid my gas. And then I also paid him more. So we drop him off or whatever. I felt really weird. Like I had this horrible feeling in my stomach about him. 
like something just irked me about him. I'm not positive of what it was at the time, now I know, but flash forward again, it had been a couple months since he visited me, since we met Bam and everything. We had discussed about giving my book back and I was like, can you please send it back? Like, you know, you know it means a lot to me. I told him this story a million times through texts and calls. Like, I told him it means a lot to me. Please send it back. He didn't. And I was like, this is really fucked up. So I texted him and I was like, if I do a, if I give you a self-addressed package, will you please put it in there? And send it back it won't cost you a fucking dime you have to literally take it put my book back and put it in your mailbox I would pay every fucking thing about it everything no no that was too hard for him to do and I remember just going off and if you follow me on Facebook I just wrote this long ass poem, like not poem, but long ass paragraph of just the shit he did and how much he stole from me, like he took from me. And just keep something that means so much to me. Like, I will admit I was stupid because I know that I was pushed around. I know I was naive. I know I shouldn't have given him what I gave him, but. I wanted to believe he was my friend so bad and I trust people a little too much and he's the reason why I don't today. He is that reason. You have to go through your own experiences to realize how awful of a person someone is to realize there are those terrible people on this earth whether you see them every day or not. There's people that are just terrible people that will fuck you over and not even blink an eye. I can't even imagine taking so much from somebody and then also taking something that had more than money value. Like not only they take hundreds and hundreds of dollars of my money, but he also took something, the last thing my grandfather gave to me. And to this day, I don't have it back. Like, it, even if I, I got the book, I got a book, but it's not the book. Someone sent me, um, a copy of the book and I'm grateful for that eternally. But, um, it's not my grandfather's. That was the most important thing about it. And even though I requested I'd pay for everything again, he couldn't walk it to his mailbox. I wasn't worth it. My grandfather wasn't worth it. Just everything I've done for him wasn't worth it. He was a user and an abuser and an awful person. And I hope nobody has to meet someone like that. Because I don't care how shitty of a person you are, you don't deserve to get fucked over like that. In a way, I'm glad I had that experience because I'm not as naive and I don't trust people like I used to, um, which sounds like a bad thing, but it's a good thing because I'm not so overly trusting. I'm not going to expect people to do things, you know, for all the positivity and all the nice things I do for them. I no longer expect anything back. And it's kind of sad now that I think about it is I kind of gave up on the, the thought of, you know, somebody who wants to do the same thing I did for someone else to do for me. And that just never happened. And the point of this is first to fucking shit talk that asshole. Like I could say so much more of the bullshit he did, but I'm... 
this is narrowing it down. Like, this is, <laughs> this video is going to be so long, but this is narrowing it the fuck down. Like, there's so much more shit he did. That could be a whole part two that I really don't want to end up telling, but if you really want to hear it, I, I can. But I'd rather keep more positivity on this than anything. Um, but there's no up talking him. He's just awful. I deleted every song off of my phone, <laughs> my computer. Like, I got rid of everything. I like blocked him on most of the shit. I don't know where the fuck he is now, but <sighs> learn from me and, you know, be a good person, but don't let someone use you because you will regret it. And <sighs> it sounds so bad, but. I hope you all have a great day, and thank you for listening to my story, and if you like, um, or would like any more of these little story times, I have multiple, um, just let me know in the comments below, and give this a big thumbs up, and I will see you in my next video. I love you, my babies. Mwah.